Hey everyone, can you believe it is June 9th and it's Tuesday night and here we are all together, our HEAT team. I'm so excited. If you don't know who I am, I'm Michelle Grensing. I'm one of the HEAT team NMDs and I live in Tennessee. And um, first of all, just pat yourself on the back for showing up. This is going to be absolutely fantastic. Um, we have a very special guest, Lisa Peppel who is from our home office, and who else loves to kind of get a glimpse behind the scenes, really get in there? I do. I just love that kind of stuff. So let me tell you a little bit about her, and then we'll give her most of our time here. So I have some great, hard, wonderful facts and some fun facts about Lisa. She graduated with a degree in chemical engineering from Clemson University in 2002. After a brief stint in manufacturing, she became the global product manager of nutritional ingredients for a Fortune 50 agribusiness company. Wow. She began working at NSA Juice Plus in 2008 as the newly developed position of quality manager for the Juice Plus product line, but quickly transitioned into product management and development roles for the company. In those roles, she directed the introduction and product changes for all of the Juice Plus products and was able to focus more on bringing the story of the Juice Plus growers to the forefront through the Farm Fresh Nutrition Program. Most recently, in her role as Director of Product Innovation, she was responsible for the development of the newest member of the Juice Plus family, drum roll, the Omega Blend. Yay! <laughs> Yay! So let me tell you a couple of fun things because I love that. So relatable. Um, so she loves to ride motorcycles. That's pretty cool. But what I think is really fun is she's been naming her vehicle since she was 16. So her current bike is named Raven. Isn't that fun? Um, she's She really is super fun. And anytime she speaks from the main stage or as you'll see here even, she does bring a lot of energy to everything she does, and you can just feel her passion, and um, I love that. She is also best friend still with her bestie since she was 14, since they were 14, and they live a thousand miles apart, but we know in this community, Miles can't keep us apart as friends. So Lisa, please take it away, and we're so excited to hear about Juice Plus Farm Fresh Nutrition. Thank you so much, and that was a, uh, a heck of an intro. I hope I can, um, can live up to it. <laughs> well, so yes, I am Lisa Peppel. My current role is the Director of Global Product Development for the Juice Plus Company, and me and my team are responsible for um, pretty much everything that has to do with our products. Uh, so we, we look at changing our products, we look at uh, new products, we look at trying to figure out better ways to make our products, new innovative technologies for agriculture or for manufacturing or for growing to help uh, make our products better every single time that, um, that we kind of make any change. That's our goal is to make our products better. And I do have an absolute passion for this. Um, I believe that you know, you have one life to live. And if you are living that life and doing things that make you happy, make you passionate, that drive, that feed your energy, that you're going to have a wonderful life. No matter the obstacles that you encounter, it's going to end up being a wonderful life. And I was so lucky and blessed to find the Juice Plus company and be able to enter into a role that I feel like was perfectly suited for my, uh, my capabilities and my skill set. So let me tell you just a little bit about, um, about the behind the scenes of what goes on into making our amazing Juice Plus products. Uh, I know there's probably a wide variety of people on this call, people who are just starting with the Juice Plus company or the Juice Plus products, and people who maybe have been here for a little longer and uh, maybe have heard me speak before, or maybe have heard me talk. So I always like to um, hope that uh, people at, of all stages can learn something from listening to me. So hopefully I can at least touch on something new that you haven't heard before. 
So our basic products are about whole food nutrition. We have really some core principles that we, we focus on, and that's, again, starting with whole food nutrition. We want to make sure that our products are minimally processed and as close to nature as possible. We also have a very limited uh, product line, which we feel like really helps us to be able to focus on the great things that we do. So we don't like to have you know, a single product that does one thing for one particular group of people. Our products are very general. So a lot of people say, you know, our products are kind of the foundation of, um, of your nutritional journey. So yes. it's- Can I just stop you for one minor second? Um, for sure. some reason, we were talking about this as if we jinx things. Oh, there you are. Maybe it'll work now. Um, your avatar was up the whole time, but when I tried to spotlight you or put speaker view on, it just kept coming back to Michelle. So we aren't seeing you. So I'm going to try again now. Well, okay. and... And I said I wasn't going to show my video because, uh, show me today because I am literally, I have been up to my kneecaps in, in dirt and mud all day and I look terrible. So that was you, why. You can try to do your avatar. I mean, we, we love seeing you. It's dark. We can barely see you anyway. But <laughs> right. I when I, when the video started going instead of the avatar, that's when I was allowed to either use speaker view or, um, spotlight. So you're on, so you can, if you go back to the avatar and we can't uh, spotlight you, then, oh, there you are. So how, at least she's up and beautiful, right, you guys? <laughs> this uh, looks way better than I look right now, as you could probably barely see. I have, I, I probably have mud throughout my hair. <laughs> so I do apologize. I'm actually, I took a couple days of vacation to, uh, to fix our yard and to actually do some gardening. And um, we had a, a tropical storm blow through. So it, um, it changed the plans a bit and made today um, a bit of a difficult day. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm happy to show this, this lovely picture of me speaking from stage. So <laughs> to get back to the story about Juice Plus, yeah, we are, um, we're really focused on whole food nutrition. We like um, we really focus on minimally processed as close to nature as possible and the narrow product line because we feel like that that helps to be able to do the things that we do really well so if we had a, a bunch of different products it would first of all be very difficult for people to understand exactly what they were and what they did with the products that we have that are focused on really holistic nutrition just the basic nutrition for everybody um, we were able to really be able to do some things that we wouldn't be able to do before. For example, um, we know the people who grow the produce. We are able to be in contact with them. We're able to have conversations with them about what they put on their grounds, what they, um, you know, what kind of fertilizers they use, what kind of uh, pesticides they use, whether it be natural or things that they have to put on the ground to take care of um, pests or fungus or anything like that. You know, we're, we're in contact with them consistently. They've been working with us for years, so they know our requirements. When we, uh, we were looking at kale, different varieties of kale, uh, I had an idea <laughs> about seven or eight years ago that, um, that there may be different nutritional content for different varieties of kale, whether it be curly leaf kale or flat leaf kale. And so I asked one of our partners, I said, have you guys ever looked at the different nutritional contents of different types of kales? And they said, no, but that sounds interesting. Let's do that. And so we embarked on a bit of a, a couple year long study uh, where we looked at the different nutritional content of different kales just to see if we were getting the highest nutritional content of kale. And what we found out, like most things, is that um, the nutrition is very, uh, very kind of varied. <laughs> uh, so it depends a, a bit on the growing conditions. It depends a bit on the variety. And um, it depends on what you're looking for. So some varieties of kale may be higher in sulforaphanes, while other varieties of kale may be higher in things like iron or vitamin E. So it really depends on what you're looking for. So we like to investigate these things, and we are so blessed to be able to work with partners who are just as curious as we are in all aspects of this. 
We also um, are able to work with people who are in, interested in improving the drying technology. We've worked with the same drying partners for many, many years. And another kind of fun thing that we've done in the last three years is looked at different um, different fruits and vegetables to see if there are better ways to dry them. So for example, we use our, our proprietary drying technology that we've used for many, many years for really most of our produce, almost all of our produce, um, and have for, for several years because it was the best. Well, there's been some new technology that's been introduced and we thought, is there is there some of our produce that might be better dried using a different technology? So we are able to work with our dryers to investigate new technologies to see whether there are ways that we can improve the, the naturalness or retain more of the nutrients, the natural nutrients that are coming from the produce. And so we've been able to make a couple changes. We've got a couple more that are on the way. You guys probably won't even notice these changes because they're, it's going to be the same great produce. It's just going to be dried in a slightly different way to retain a slightly different or a slight, retain a little bit more of the nutritional content. And, you know, this allows us to do a lot of things. For example, we recently made a modification to our capsule products, um, which people should be seeing imminently. It, uh, some people may be seeing this already, but others may be on your next box. And that's that we removed the enzymes and probiotics from our capsules. And we did that not because they were, um, that they weren't doing anything in the beginning, but they were. In the beginning of Juice Plus, we had, um, we had the best that we could do at the time. And as I mentioned, we've been able to work with the same growers, with the same manufacturers, with the same partners for 28 years. And during that time, technology has improved. We've learned more about our products and we've done 40 over 40 clinical studies on our products, which have taught us more and more things about our products. So what we actually found out is that the enzymes and probiotics, while they were probably doing something in the beginning, they were probably helping with the bioavailability when we first launched Juice Plus, the things that we have done, the improvements that we've made over the years have made them so that they're really not adding anything to the product. And one thing that we are very passionate about is that we are not putting anything into the products that aren't adding something to the benefits. So as we started to look at this over the years, um, and as we had some regulatory challenges in several countries, um, we had to remove the enzymes and probiotics in most regions. But in the US, uh, they were still there. And so we did a hard look. We did multiple clinical studies without the enzymes to make sure that they performed the same way. We did some, what we call, we call them bond studies, like James Bond, you know, behind the scenes, super secret <laughs> um, studies that we don't usually publish. They're essentially just to give us an idea about what's going on with our products. Um, sometimes those bond studies end up getting published. Um, one of them uh, just got published in a journal called Polyphenols. And another one is actually the first Omega study that we did um, that was started as a bond study and finished as a full-blown study. So we do these to, um, to really test hypotheses. And so we did that with the enzymes and probiotics and learned that really there was no difference. And so we were able to remove those because we had done such amazing work with our farmers to get better varietals of produce that are higher in nutrient content. We've done a lot of work with our drying partners to ensure that we were retaining more and more of those natural enzymes in the products. And we did a lot of clinical research to ensure that we know what our products do from from bioavailability to immune function to um, skin health to uh, you know, inflammation to a many different things that we've done our clinical research on. And we, if we had a bigger um, platform or portfolio of products, we wouldn't really be able to do that because it would be very difficult to focus our energy on 50 different products where it's very easy to focus our energy on three. 
So that's one of the great things that I think people, um, people maybe don't think about when it comes to Juice Plus is the simplicity of the products. It's fruits and vegetables in a capsule. And who doesn't need more of that, right? How many people can, can honestly say that they get enough fruits and vegetables every single day. I know I can't, and, and I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, but I also know that, um, like, for example, tonight I made a deconstructed chicken Kiev for dinner, which was very good, but um, it didn't exactly have, it wasn't chock full of fruits and vegetables. It's fried chicken. Um, so, it, but it tastes fantastic. So you got to kind of take the good with the bad. And the thing I love about Juice Plus is it gives me that, that kind of um, platform, that nutritional um, stability that I know I'm getting at least the benefits of the nutrients that are found in Juice Plus uh, to help me through when I maybe don't eat my best every day. And the great, another great thing, another thing I absolutely love about the product and the, the company itself is that we do things with integrity. So we have a lot of, um, a lot of values. Well, we have seven core values in our company. And the biggest one that I think I, I love to talk about, um, actually, I love to talk about a lot of them, but the one that I think resonates most with, with the product is quality. And that is absolutely core to everything that we do. And my team is not in charge of quality. And I love that. I love that there is somebody outside of our team that does the product development and the product innovation that stands behind us and says, no, 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 let's check this before we do anything. No, 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 let's look at this before we go any further. Let's do this test before we do anything else. I love that, you know, we do, my team definitely thinks about quality every day, all day, but we have people that stand behind us that are even better than we are to double check every single thing that we do. And on top of that, we have third party certifications that go above and beyond just our company's values on, on quality. So we don't just take our own, um, our own testing. We don't just take our own word for quality. We make sure that our quality is double checked in every phase. So it's, and again, it's not just our quality. It's not just the Juice Plus company. This third-party certifying organization checks our partners as well. They are doing audits of our manufacturing facilities, and uh, they are checking the raw materials that come in to ensure that they are meeting their, the quality standards as well. So every step of our supply chain is audited not only by Juice Plus, but also by our manufacturing partners and by our third-party certifiers. So I feel like that, because it is one of our core values, is, is so easy to understand. We don't accept failures in quality in any place in our supply chain at all, period, end of story. <laughs> and I don't honestly know another company that takes it that seriously. There are a lot of companies that talk about they have high quality, they have, you know, they have the best in the world, or, or, you know, they have a lot of things that sound really good, but when you get down to the core of it, they don't take it as seriously as we do. And I will tell you that the team that we have at the corporate office is the best team I have ever worked with in my entire life. And it's not the best because we're all so, um, so smart or we're all so talented. It's the best because we have a single focus and that is to make sure that the Juice Plus products are the safest, most effective products ever in the world. And if anybody can do it better than we can, then we feel like we've failed. And so far, we feel like we've been able to stay number one with quality, with consistency, with efficacy, with clinical research. We feel like we are number one. And I can tell you right now, we all take it very seriously at, that we are going to stay there. We have, we have meetings about it. We talk about it all the time. It's actually 
our team's mission is to remain the world's leader in whole food nutrition. Um, so we think about it constantly. And, um, and I really feel like that is a huge, a huge benefit. And that's why it's so, so fun, so uh, energizing, so fulfilling to work um, for the company and to work in my job is because I know I have a great product that I have to support. I know I have great people um, that have my back. And I know I have great people that are going to take that product and really enjoy it um, and be able to share it with so many people around the world. And that's all of you on the phone today. And so, you know, we couldn't do what we do if you guys weren't there doing what you do. And so I feel like this is a huge kind of group effort um, and something that we take uh, we take very seriously. We don't want to ever fail you guys. And so, um, so we, we make sure that we're maintaining the quality, the consistency, consistency, the efficacy of our product. And to tell you just a little bit about, um, about the, the technology that we have, I, um, I've talked a little bit about the fact that we've worked with the same growers. I've talked a little bit about how we work with them uh, to ensure that we know what they're putting on their fields, that we know that, that we have the best produce. Talked a little bit about the drying technology um, and how we ensure that we have the highest quality nutritional powders available, the dehydrated fruits and vegetables. Um, and then the next step is really our manufacturing partners. And these are the people that take all of these great powders and turn them into products. And we have a, a partner that we've worked with for the entire 28 years we've been working at Juice Plus or working on Juice Plus. And they are, they are the best in the world. We, uh, they have a manufacturing facility in California and one in Lugano, Switzerland. And they do everything exactly how we would expect them to. Um, we don't think of ourselves as separate from them. We think of ourselves as almost sister organizations. They they are on our weekly calls talking about uh, everything that we're doing, everything that we've got going on. There are second hands when it comes to product development and product quality. And they take it certainly as seriously as we do and are as have the same values. They share the values that we do as well. And to me, it, it is, um, it's incredibly important that you have partners like that. And as we launch new products, we occasionally introduce new partners. And probably one of my favorite stories is about the newest product in the Juice Plus family. And that's, um, I call it my baby. <laughs> uh, and that's the Omega Blend. And uh, a lot of people don't realize that we worked on Omega Blend for three years before it was launched. And it took us three years to get it right because I had a vision for what the product was going to be. And as we worked through the, the vision, we had to make refinements and we had to figure things out. And there wasn't a capsule shell that I was happy with. Um, I knew I didn't want th that the product should not be put into a, a soft gel because that's what traditionally oils are put into. And the soft gel technology is what they call a form, fill, and seal technology, which means that the, the, um, the actual capsule is uh, melted and formed around the oils and then it's cooled and the oils are inside. Well, the worst thing for oils are heat and oxygen. And in that technology, while you are filling the oils, you are heating them and, and introducing oxygen into that environment. And so just by putting them into the capsule shell, the soft gel, you are actually starting the degradation process. And I just couldn't get okay with that, especially because the oils that we knew we wanted to use were so delicate because they are minimally processed. We're not refining these oils. These are unrefined oils. They're cold pressed or carbon uh, CO2 um, extracted, which essentially is a way of just passing carbon dioxide over the oil to pull out some of the um, some of the things that you don't want, some of the waxes and some of the other things that, um, that make the, 
oil solid at room temperature. So you purify it by, uh, by, passing, it, by passing CO2 through it and, or by cold pressing it, just like people do olive oil. And so these oils are delicate. Um, can, you know, as probably you've cooked with some delicate oils like olive oil, if you heat olive oil, it goes bitter very, very quickly. And that would be the same thing that would happen. It's not that we were worried about the taste necessarily. <clears throat> it's we're worried about the nutritional content and retaining those, uh, those omega fatty acids without them degrading. So we knew we had to go into a two piece hard shell capsule but they didn't have a vegetarian capsule shell that I, wa I was comfortable with. So we worked with a capsule manufacturer for about a year and a half to develop the capsule shell from tapioca pullulan that we use currently today. And we had to redesign that capsule three times before, we, before it actually worked for our product. And I love that story because they were as interested in making this right as we were and you know you have a great partner when they're calling you saying every morning saying okay we ran a trial yesterday and this is what we found what do you want us to do today and when they are that invested and they're calling you before you have to call them you know you've made a great partner and we have done a lot of um, a lot of improvements over that product line through through the development process and one of the things that, that I love about that product is not only is it cold filled, so we aren't damaging the oils before we put them into the capsule shell, but if you look at that capsule, there's a little bubble inside of it. And most people think that's just air. That's actually nitrogen gas. So we backfill the capsule before we seal it with nitrogen gas, which pushes out all of the oxygen. So not only are we taking care to ensure that the oil isn't heated, but we're also pushing out all of that oxygen. So we're ensuring that those oils inside that capsule are staying as clean, as, um, as great as they did the, when they were first pressed, um, when you get those capsules. So for us, it's not about doing things good enough. It's about doing things the best that we can absolutely do them. And if that means working to develop new technology, and it may take three years, but we're going to do that every single time. And I hope that you guys can see uh, some of the benefits of that through taking the wonderful products that or what we feel like are the wonderful products that we have. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll leave it there today. I hope you guys learned a little bit about our product line. Um, we have some great tools at your disposal. If you want to learn more about the farmers, you can go to our Juice Plus, um, Juice Plus uh, YouTube channel, and you can look at the Farm Fresh Nutrition videos there. And you can see uh, some of the great things that our farmers do. And there's quite a lot of content on our, our new websites, which will be coming out later this year. So I would keep an eye on juiceplus.com um, for some changes that you'll see there. So thank you all so much. I really appreciate uh, your time this evening. I know your time is precious and I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Oh, wow. Thank you, Lisa, so much. And, um, you know, if you if you only have 30 minutes, please, um, you know, go ahead and we'll honor that time. But I was just wondering, could we could we ask you a couple of questions? Sure. <laughs> so I saw in the chat um, someone had heard Sean Hopkins mention that there could be some changes with our chewables in relation to our capsules, just kind of making them more similar. Is there anything that you can share about that? You know, Sean, who is my boss, um, likes to flap his jaws quite a lot, doesn't he? <laughs> he I'm just kidding. About that. <laughs> <laughs> now, yes, we are working on a project right now that will, um, so one of the challenges with the chewables is because of the matrix um, of the chewable, um, the, like the chewable matrix itself, the pectin, the fruit pectins that are used in that, um, we are actually limited in some of the nutrients that we can add to them. Well, we've worked, we found a company that's able to do a very different technology that's at a bit of a lower temperature, um, 
that will allow us to have more of those nutrients um, in the chewables that we have in the capsules. It's a project that we are in the middle of right now. Um, it is still in the development, I would say mid developmental stages. So like I said, it took us three years to develop the um, Omega capsules. We're about a year into this development. So I wouldn't expect anything like tomorrow. Um, but we will keep you informed as we, as we learn more. We still got to do some stability test work and we've got to do some of our, you know, we like to do our bond studies, our behind the scenes studies. So we've got some of those planned for the next, um, the next couple months actually. So I love, much I love progress that. is being made, but <laughs> not quite ready for lunch yet. Yeah. I don't know if all of you on the call have heard, um, how they reference the James Bond, kind of the super secret agent stuff that goes on that leads to, you know, kind of the, the development and the progress and the formulation and all of the things that they are never, ever careless about. And now I can picture Lisa like on a, you know, a bike named Raven, you know, James Bond, it really kind of all fits together with me now. I have a great picture. Um, <laughs> but um, I have another question. I was wondering, so you know, we go through so many steps, like you said, and I know that we are at the top and that is the goal always to be number one in the industry. Do you, is there any way to, to tell us like which steps aren't even required? You know, I mean, I think that that's pretty cool to know. Yeah. Um, so I, there's a lot of steps that aren't required. Um, the, the basic requirements, so the FDA essentially requires us to audit one step back. So that would be making sure that our manufacturing partners are doing what they are supposed to do. Um, what we do is we audit all the way back. So we audit our manufacturing partners. We audit the raw material suppliers that supply the manufacturing partners, which are largely the drying partners and some of the ingredient suppliers that do, um, you know, some of the other ingredients like the, um, the vitamin E, the mixed tocopherols, the lutein, those kinds of things, um, which all also come from Whole Foods, but Right. There are slightly different processes um, to get them there than our drying partners. And then we go one step beyond that and audit our farms. Um, and that, lit that goes all the way back to, for example, the lutein and zeaxanthin come from marigolds. Um, those marigold fields are actually in India, and we have audited those marigold fields in India, the manufacturing process to extract the, um, the resin that the, that leads to the extraction process that gets to the lutein. Um, so we are, we are very serious about, um, about our supply chain. Uh, and that helps us in times like we've been having recently. There's a lot, of, um, a lot of companies in our space or similar spaces that have struggled with being able to, um, to continue the supply of some of their ingredients. Well, first of all, we like to ensure that as many ingredients as possible come from local sources as we can. And for those that can't, for example, the lutein that comes from the marigolds in India, we ensure that we have, um, we have supply, um, in, it, uh, supply consistency built into our chain. So we make sure that as we see things coming through, so as we saw coronavirus starting to hit, we reached out to all of our suppliers and said, okay, we feel like this is going to be an issue. Can you bring more material in for us? And they were able to, and so we were um, we weren't hit with um, with any outages for our products here in the states, which um, which is a lot of companies were. And so I think those are the things, those are the steps that that really help us from that perspective. And additionally, when we first started working with uh, NSF, our third-party certifier here in the U.S., one of the things that they said is, you know, you don't have to test as much as you do. You can just test, you know, um, like the incoming raw materials to ensure that they comply. You don't have to test from the field. You don't have to test the powders. You just test um, the incoming raws, and, and if they pass, then they're fine. And we said that's not what we do. 
um, because we want to ensure that we know, again, supply chain is very important to us. So if there's a hiccup in our supply chain, if we just tested the incoming raw materials, we wouldn't necessarily know exactly where the problem was. Because we could have, you know, we work with several different, for example, parsley growers um, throughout the United States because we like to ensure that we can have a consistent supply. So if we have four parsley growers and that parsley is dehydrated and blended together, then we don't know if it was at one of these parsley growers or if it was at the, the dryer where the problem happened. So we like to test at every part of the supply chain so that we can understand before it's a problem that something could be an issue. And if we ever have a consistent issue with a supplier, then we will stop using that supplier. I think that's in my time, I've been with Juice Plus for 12 years, that's only happened twice. Um, and it was not ingredients that were necessarily core <laughs> to our business. Um, but we still, we like to test every, um, at, at many different steps along the way to ensure that we know what's happening before it can become a problem. Wow. That's, I mean, it, 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 the belief um, in what we have just has grown exponentially hearing all of this again. And um, I see there's just, you've, you've mentioned lutein. Could you um, say why we have that in our product? And Absolutely. Yeah, so we have, so um, lutein is one of several carotenoids that are naturally occurring in fruits and vegetables. And um, from the beginning of Juice Plus, we, we took the fruits and vegetables and then we added some nutrients to it. So we like to call it the juice side and then the plus side. So the lutein, the beta carotene, the vitamin E, the, um, the lemon peel, which contains the folic acid, um, those are all what we would consider the plus side. So those are the things that are labeled. And in order to have consistency in labels, we need to add those back because um, different growing seasons, different regions, even different parts of a single field can have different nutrient contents for the same fruit. So but, uh, apples have vitamin C but apples grown in the shade have a different vitamin C content than apples that are largely in the sun. So you, you have to be able to standardize it. And so we've been able to figure out over the years how to standardize it with more and more whole food nutrients um, or you know, things that are made from more whole foods. So less extracted, more whole food stuff like the lemon peel and folic acid. Wow. There's so much that, you know, there's just so many details and so many things that, you know, we don't have to understand because we can trust you guys <laughs> and know that you never settle and that um, even if we're being careless, you won't be. And that's, that's, um, that's huge. And yes, I, we could just keep listening. A quick uh, maybe yes or no. Somebody asked, do we ever use our tower gardens for our product are, are growing? Uh, so that's the $10,000 question, right? Oh. Um, the answer is no. And the answer is no right now because um, the tower gardens are fantastic for home growing. Um, they're fantastic. You know, there's a lot of people who can grow um, in a big, um, uh, what are they called? Why can't I think of the name of them? Those things with the green <laughs> Greenhouses, thank you. My brain just stopped. Um, but yeah, so greenhouses, but you know, we use so much produce that um, the biggest challenge with tower gardens is harvesting. So you have to hand harvest every tower. There isn't a machine that can harvest it. Where in the fields, there are machines that can harvest like kale and spinach and stuff like that. So the cost, um, right now, the cost would be astronomically higher to, to um, use our tower gardens in the capacity, in the large scale capacity that um, that we need for our capsules. That said, this is a project that we have been 
trying to figure out since we started working with Cat with the Tower Garden. So we continue to try and make this work. And I know that eventually somebody way smarter than me is going to figure out how to do it. Um, and we're just waiting for that really super, super smart person to come and join us. Um, and, and that will be how we, how we can move that to the next level. We're still trying. I will still try and rack yeah. my brain, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, I mean, from all of us and, uh, just thank you so much for what you do, for what your team does. Um, we just, obviously we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you and we wouldn't get to nourish ourselves and our families and our communities, um, as wonderfully as we do if it wasn't for you. So thank you so much. And thank you for taking your time on this crazy day um, <laughs> of your life that you, you know, were actually on a staycation to share with us. We could keep hearing and, you know, just listening to this stuff all day. That's kind of unanimous, but um, that's going to be it for tonight. Thank you guys. So, thank so, you much. Guys so much. Um, I really Nikki's appreciate gonna it. I'm going to unmute everybody. Sure. So thank you. Thank you. Yay. Lisa. Lisa. Thank you. Lisa, that was so amazing. Thank you, thank you so very much. Oh, You're always you. awesome. Thank you. Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. 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 Thank